Sorry, I, I uh, stepped out and I went to get one of the uh, Bamber players, and he's coming. So uh, we we started uh, a, an important match here, Molde versus, versus Orcas. And as our uh, guest in the studio now, we have a member of the uh, Bamber team that just won over um, <laughs> the, the Danes. And uh, your name is Sebastian Lange. <laughs> And uh, I'm the goalkeeper of Bamberg, and yes, I think it was a very nice game. Um, we took advantage of uh, some serious situations and um, had our goals, so I think it was quite good. We just um, gained a lot of energy and power during the last um, um, uh, break, so I think we, we were much better than we were against uh, the Budweiser team. Um, and I hope it will go on like this. <laughs> it, it was uh, the Danes were playing a very defensive game. They were playing very hard, and they were uh, quite determined, and they never gave up. Yes, of course. Uh, I mean, they were very. Um, uh, the Danish guys are very strong, so the, it's it's a very good tactic to just wait until the uh, the enemy comes to your goal, and then just stop the the um, uh, attack right now. So. Now we're watching uh, Molde and Orcas, and um, is this match important for you? Uh, yes, of course. Um, to, tonight at 19 o'clock we will play against Orcas, and uh, if we uh, win that match, uh, we will play against Molde tomorrow. So I think this is the one team which is between us and the <laughs> uh, victory. But um, it's, it's quite challenging playing uh, against Molde. It's a very strong team. And, but you also don't have to underestimate the Orcas because they are also very motivated, very strong guys and, and um, especially very fast. Um, and also have a similar playing style like uh, Budweis or um, the uh, Danish guys, um, Tutzerne, um, because they are playing like um, just wait in the defense and destroy every attack from the enemy and then Make a quick uh, uh, sprint uh, through the um, through the pool and attack the the goal. And they have a lot of uh, situational awareness, so that if they do get the ball, they usually find a pass forward. They don't pass backward. Yes, they are very quick in in, in the um, uh, in the counter situation. Now we see actually Orcas is pressing Molde uh, here zero zero. We four minutes is. Uh, so this is a, uh, I don't know if a surprise is the right word, but this is going to be a fight yes of course i think both teams are very motivated especially the orcas i mean they fly over <laughs> six thousand miles or so to come here and uh, they are quite motivated to win this uh, champions cup and uh, they, they know that they are smaller physically and that's one of the the challenges they they always face that they weigh maybe 10 percent less especially than the larger norwegian players Yes, um, I mean their strength is the speed, I, I guess. So the Molde are very strong, but I, I think if you stress them enough, uh, they won't keep this uh, pace like uh, Orcas. You, uh, when you play against Orcas, you have the impression that they don't get tired at all. So they they are always there, there and um, making quick moves, quick shots, and and now Orcas has stolen the ball, but have lost it back again to Molde. Moldy player is under this this uh, double counter attack. Uh, he passes across, and uh, you see the goalie of, uh, of Orcas is always spinning around. Uh, yes, it's very intensive. <laughs> but as I said, I mean you don't have the impression that they uh, will ever get tired. So um, I, I think Molde um, does it quite well because they always uh, grab the enemy and then do a safe pass. And this is the big advantage if, uh, if you have uh, players which are much weaker than you uh, in physical strength. So, I yeah, but, uh, Now, anyway, we see that Orcas has moved across the pool. They, they've, uh, they've lost the ball, but they're counter-checking immediately. And uh, it, it's the pattern of the uh, Colombian play to have two attackers on anybody who has the ball and they have long bottom time, so that's why you get that impression they are never getting tired. Yes, that's what I meant. Yeah. 
Field is coming in. They've got two on two. On two. The, the goalie uh, on uh, Orcas spins and as often has his back straight out in the pool. What is the explanation for that approach? What approach? Uh, the, the, the goalie has his back out, sometimes straight to the, straight to the yeah. pool. Well, that's, in, in my opinion, that's not a very good situation for the goalkeeper because you're very vulnerable um, against attacks from the front. But the advantage is that if they, you, you, you will uh, get attacked from the, uh, from the edges of the pool, um, you have a good oversight. So you can act quickly and rotate to the... Oh, there was a quite... A lot of pressure there. Strong pressure on the... So the, 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 the Orcas goalies are... are have was it a score? Yeah, okay, we, we didn't see the, the, the basket go in. But uh, wait, though, the whole they took it out. the the whole uh, the whole go the, the basket is shifted out, as we can see. Uh, it's, it's, it's technical timeout. It looks like technical timeout. It could be to put the basket back in. I don't. Is that is that the rule in underwater rugby that uh, the basket's being shifted out? You get a technical timeout to to move it back again. Um, not really, but uh, if there are any s uh, spare parts moving through the pool, I mean, if the, pool, uh, the, the goal is not uh, fixed anymore, there should be a screw. And this is a dangerous uh, spare part which have to, has to be removed from the hazard, yes. Well, now we can see that it, there, there was no score. We, uh, we didn't see a score. There was a cheer, but it was a, a, a miss. Uh, now, now there's a dangerous attack. Uh, Multi players are crowding around. They're pressing. The, uh, we, we, th the goal is difficult to defend now because it's shifted out and uh, the Norwegians are trying to take advantage of the space behind the goal uh, but the, the, the Orcas players are, are onto they've got the ball actually uh, is he going to hold it he's clinging to the ball so really the the molded player is not really taking the ball they're taking the ball and a player yeah that's what I said before so they took very big advantage of their physical strength and uh, just grab the player with the ball and uh, do a safe pass or um, um, get the ball from the, from the enemy. And, uh, now the, the, the goal has been stolen. Molde has stolen the goal and uh, that Orcas is going to face a very difficult situation with this free ball now because uh, uh, they don't have a, 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 a goalie in place. Yeah, but perhaps there will be a, a timeout or something. Oh, now Orcas has got their goal back. Uh, this is quite an exciting game. Yes, um, but the experience says that um, to have the goal during uh, um, a th a f a free ball um, is not a big advantage at all. I, I mean, it's, it's a little advantage, but you have to keep in mind that you have always to bring the ball into the goal. And this is quite difficult because you have one player more in the defense, which is against you and which tries very hard to keep you away from the goal. So. The experience says uh, it's not as easy as it looks. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a, a panic situation. And also, if a player steals the goal and is lying there and trying to hold it, and they run low on oxygen and they force themselves to stay longer, they say, "I have put so much investment into this," and then when they come up, they cannot play anymore. Yes, of course, but that's the risk of this. Uh, I mean, if you do this, you have to keep a long time on the goal to take advantage of the situation otherwise it would be complete senseless so but you're you're used to playing without oxygen that's your 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 you're a goalie and you know this <laughs> yes i mean you at least you have to uh, keep up uh, penalty throw time so 45 seconds should be able we were at the last world championships in Hels helsinki and you saw claudia the colombian goalie who did a penalty and she came out and passed out and was unconscious. Uh, total. Com the goal is fixed. Oh, they they put the goal back in place. So there has been a discussion of some sort. Maybe there was a timeout called or something. And uh, uh, this is important for Orcas. Really, they needed to have the goal shifted back into the right place. This would be a very dis big disadvantage to have the goal moving around uh, and giving high pressure from the Molde team. Yeah. Molde has the ball. They're coming in. He's got his he's got his hand extended out and uh, doesn't have to have the ball under his, uh, his armpit. Uh, that's real confidence that a big guy can hold the ball out even in a dangerous place like that and, and, and not worry about losing it. And here you've seen a very typical situation for Molde. They always uh, park a guy right next to the goal for a very long time. They 
do uh, something like the goal stealing, but uh, in in sense of um, defense stealing. So the, the defense guy has no room left to to act on this side, and if the ball comes through, you have a very good situation. Yes, I mean, you, if you talk about a guy like Bard Inge Petson, he's huge. So if he takes the place underneath the goal, there's no room for the back yeah. or anybody. <laughs> he's that big. I mean, they have plenty of these guys. Not not only Inge Petersen, but also um, the Ivar. <laughs> Ivar is a brutal a brute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there and there's there it is. It was. And and now, I thought if if they would uh, would keep the uh, zero zero up to the half time, they have a re really good chance. But now, I think they will come quite strong after the half time break. But. I think the motivation is now a little bit lost. <laughs> Be because they, they know that they have to score a goal on Molde and uh, the Molde goalkeepers are big and you're, it's not easy to move them off. And I think they, they know, they are aware of, the, um, of their weakness that they don't have a, some sort of uh, planned attack on the goal. I mean, the uh, Orcas always or, uh, do a lot of goals in uh, very quick situations, so uh, just get advantage of a um, situation where the, the goalkeeper is not aware or is, is not quick enough or is not quite good on the goal. So these are the typical Orca goals. They don't uh, use pressure goals, so uh, building up pressure over a long distance and then make the goal. And this is what they have to do now against Molde. I, I don't think they uh, that Molde will um, let a very quick ball come through and, and do the goal. And, and Molde is not that slow. You know, that's also quite impressive, even they are very big guys, <laughs> they are very quick, but um, I think they, uh, in my opinion, if you stress them enough, they will lose this advantage. I mean, you can't, you can't be everything, right? You can't, can be fast or you can be uh, physical uh, strong, so. I, I, I mean, the, the, the technique with Molde is a pass forward, that they are, are maybe swim half a meter and at the same time they are searching for the pass they're never clinched the ball up under their arm and, and then they have a chance to, to, to move across very rapidly so the, the Norwegian passing is it changing the way the, that Bamberg sees the game today that no, no, Molde has been so successful with this passing into a zone they don't even see their own player they say you, our player is supposed to be there we just pass into that empty space yeah, we, we, we call it trick shots. They do a lot of tricky stuff like uh, handling the ball behind the back. And, but the disadvantage of this um, uh, type of playing is you have a very open ball in, in, in usual situations. And um, so you're vulnerable to um, strong attacks from, uh, from the, the middle player or something like that. If there comes anybody from behind, you can very easily grab the ball from the Norwegians. So this is the point where you have to destroy this advantage. If they do s those trick shots, they are very impressive but uh, and also quite dangerous. Um, but I, I think if you you stop them by just grabbing the ball from behind, they, they won't keep it up. You'll neutralize it. Yes. And now the action has resumed again in the second half. Molde has a 1-0 lead over Orcas. And we, we are expecting Orcas to come out uh, fighting, but are they going to feel a little bit of desperation or despair that they have to score a goal on a, a team which is very difficult to score against? And right now the pressure is on Orcas again. You see the goalie, he's paddling hard to keep his position. The Molde player is coming from above. He's, he can hold the ball, pass to his teammate below, and uh, the, the pressure is, is now tremendous on the, on the Colombian defensive uh, players right now. I think this is also a good tactic just to keep up the pressure to don't let uh, raise uh, any hope for the enemy. So, But the Orcas has got the ball, they sprint out and uh, he gets it to the, to the halfway point, passes back to a teammate who turns to the right and passes forward to a, a teammate who's coming in from the right side. They have three on two and uh, it's, it's, uh, it shows that they, they're dangerous with this uh, counter situation that we talked about, an unstable situation. The buzzer sounds from the referee, what could it be? Uh, looks like um, 
attacking the goal without the ball or something. Okay. So it's a free ball in favor of uh, Molde. And Molde's uh, uh, players are, are now lurking around the goal. The Orcas players have uh, taken position. They're trying, but there's an attack already. And it's, uh, it's this very physical grind. What do you think happened there? We ball the, uh, the other direction now. So um, this, I've watched this before. Molde is um, also, I think it's it's uh, it's. Well, you can discuss it uh, on on both sides, but Molde is uh, because they're stacking a lot of guys around the enemy goal. Um, there's always the danger of um, uh, attacking without the ball, and if a referee, a referee is very uh, sensitive to this, this will lead always to a free ball. So. Because uh, you're in physical contact, you're big, you're swimming, you don't have the ball anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you're you're pushing. So it's it, if you're just resting against the other player, maybe they won't call it. But if you're uh, kicking and, and moving and driving them away, you can be called for uh, attacking the player without the ball. But the mold is back again, threatening Orcas. Now we see really clearly that Orcas they do have a a, a tendency to have the goalie facing out, which you don't see in the Nordic countries. Um, that's not played that way, but uh, the, the <laughs> so the, the, now it's this is the weak spot of the system. He hasn't seen the ball coming because uh, he lies with the back right outside to the pool. So uh, he was quite unaware of the situation and get the goal without any resistance. So this was a very weak defense now, and and also what you what you also see quite nicely is that um, the Orcas are having big trouble to keep the ball running in front of the Molde goal. So it's, it's always switching between sides because their strength is the speed but not the, the tactic playing around the goal with pressure. Oh, oh and it was a, uh, a one on two fast break situation. Uh, the Molde player came over and we rejoin the action now with uh, Orcas player with a good grip on the ball. He rips it away. He's got a lot of pressure from uh, Molde players. Another Orcas player picks it up. He's under tremendous pressure. He moves the ball around very, uh, that good ball handling skill there. Um, and then passes out to a team. But uh, Molde is really fighting hard on it. His forechecking is fierce. Yes, of course. I mean, that's what I said. The, the pressure has to keep up that uh, the Orcas won't uh, raise any hope on the, on the victory now. So, but I think the game is lost, so. I think it won't change. But uh, Orcas is, is uh, high speed, so there's no there's no luxury. You cannot say we have won and we relax now because. No. I I mean that's what uh, uh, that's the point. They they travel a, a very big distance and are very motivated. So. Uh, the referee's halt action is going to be a free ball in favor of it appears to be Orcas. Yes. So we don't know the reads could have been holding, could have been anything. Um, the land referees, they signal over there, but we don't always see what the signal is. And uh, in the best of all possible worlds, we'd have a walkie-talkie so that someone would tell us every time. But we, we, we Vinny has a walkie-talkie, but he walks around with it himself, you know. So, all right. Uh, so, Mulder's over. It's an empty goal. The goalie gets down just in time, but it's a, it's a, another stress situation. And uh, it, there, there's a lot of pressure here. Orcas has managed to clamp on the ball, but uh, with two Norwegian players there, pushing, they get it back again, they're down on the bottom, uh, the Molde player s s swings uh, shoulders back and forth, you can't grab a ball away from someone that strong. Three, three uh, zero. Yeah. So the, and this, this goal happens out of it, wanted from the Orcas. They, they have a free ball for them in front of the Molde goal and let the, the ball go. So. so. I mean, it's also that, that Orcas wants to score now and Probably they're not playing defensively as, as well as they should be. Yeah, maybe they just say, okay, let's give it a shot and make the point, make make one goal at least. <laughs> that would be that would be something. Uh, I don't think that they will have an easy time scoring a goal, but uh, right now Moldes managed to hold on to the ball and spinning around. Uh, I think that's Frederico there, uh, who is. Uh, blocking the way of the, the multiplayer, but not taking the ball away from him. And 
It's at midfield, and Orcus has stolen the ball back again. They come over into the corner. It's uh, dropped down and picked up by a molded player. Uh, is there a break in the action here? A free ball. A free ball, yeah. Uh, but a, I think a good tactic is if the player is quite on the edge of the pool, you can push him out and uh, get the free ball for you. So if, if the enemy is driving the ball out of the playing area, you usually get a free goal, but uh, a free ball. But um, that's also a little bit of problem. The referees seem not to um, judge this uh, rule very tight. So um, we, we've seen a lot of situations where the, um, the team who carries out the ball has uh, get the um, they 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 get the free ball. Yeah, which is which is wrong. The, 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 the it should be the other way, yeah. But uh, otherwise, the refereeing has been pretty pretty good. The the agreement has been. So now this this match has less than two and a half minutes left in it, and uh, it's impossible for Orcas to make a comeback at this point. Uh, can they even score? Uh, it sounds uh, unlikely at this point. So Molde is is uh, pushing through, and what does this mean for Bamberg? I think this means it's like every year Molde is the, the team which stands between us and the victory. So, um, But even the Orcas are not to be underestimated. So They could be uh, a little bit um, playing even harder in the next match if they are motivated by the loss. Yes, maybe. And I, I, I don't know if uh, they will win against us in the quarterfinals. I think they are in the finals, so they will face Molde again. But... That, that, that they will only like to play more. That's why they've come across the ocean. I mean, you have to say that uh, Germany is the country that invented underwater rugby, but uh, Colombia is the country which is now leading in enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, they are very, very motivated. They, they, came, they are always coming. I, I think there was not a year in the last seven years or so that they haven't come to Germany. So visit for the Champions Cup and so the, 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 uh, the, the Sweden has fallen really as a, uh, a an underwater rugby power and Germany uh, is uh, staying steady with a lot of club players. Uh, Russia, with almost no clubs, is becoming a leader simply by motivation and organization. And then Colombia at a grassroots level. Oh, yeah. oh, Mold is coming across. Yeah, he's he's gonna uh, yeah, nice. That, that was a, a case where the, the big strong guy, he said, uh, I'm, I'm just going to score. But this should not happen. I mean, it's not a very good playing style that you have a situation where one guy just make a point, uh, a goal against three other guys. So, But they're quite strong, so it's, it's hard to, to stop them. But this should not happen at all. The forward who was doing the forechecking there, I, I guess it was a forward, he was going for the body and not the ball, so the Norwegian was holding the ball along his body and uh, he could have snatched it away, as you were saying, it was vulnerable, but uh, he didn't see it and there was no time. So uh, there, there you see that uh, time is everything and you can't take what you don't see. Yes, of course, yeah. So, uh, there, there's been a, a big question, where is Bamberg in the EuroLeague? The EuroLeague's all going publicly on, on the internet, on YouTube, and saying Bamberg is not daring to come into the EuroLeague, and this must be a little challenge, to, or you don't want to play in EuroLeague? Well, there's a discussion ongoing. We are invited to EuroLeague, but um, we see a lot of problems with the EuroLeague um, in sense of um, how this is doable. So it's a very big financial question, so not every player could afford to travel three or four times to a, to another country and um, most of our, our players are spending a lot of time with